Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss. It is Monday, so it's meal prep day. I have three amazing healthy recipes for you. We have breakfast, lunch, and a sweet treat. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I do a meal prep every single Monday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Down in the description box at the top, I will put my recipe website. That is where you can find all three of today's recipes and all of the other recipes I've created here on my channel. Also my nutrition coaching website where I offer personalized macros and calories. This is what I follow to lose my 140 pounds. Highly recommend as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and my free amazing supportive Facebook group. Come join us, we'd love to have you. So let's head into the kitchen for this week's meal prep. For breakfast this week, I'm making peanut butter banana baked oatmeal cups. I've been craving some type of oatmeal breakfast and this sounds amazing. So let me show you what you'll need. So first you're going to need some sugar-free chocolate chips of your choice. I have a mix here of Lily's and Lakanto. However, I'm going to be switching over to the Chalk Zero. If you have not tried the Chalk Zero chocolate chips, milk and dark, both absolutely amazing. Way better than Lily's. No bitterness like you get in Lily's and Lakanto even. These are so, so good. I'll link Chalk Zero down below for you with a discount. So I'm going to use up what's left in my container and then like I said, switching over to Chalk Zero. And then I have Lakanto Golden as my brown sugar. You'll need some rolled oats, milk of your choice, salt, nutmeg and cinnamon, baking powder, peanut butter, two eggs, and three ripe bananas. So you're going to grab out a large bowl and your three ripe bananas and we're going to mash those up. And then we're adding in one third cup of peanut butter. And then mix those two together. Next up is one and a half cups of milk and your two eggs. And then again, mix that all together. And then into a medium bowl, we're adding two cups of rolled oats, one quarter cup Lakanto Golden, a pinch of salt, our nutmeg and our cinnamon, and a teaspoon of baking powder. And then we're going to mix our dry ingredients together. And then we're adding the dry ingredients in with the wet ingredients, and then giving that a stir until fully mixed. And then I have 300 Lily's chocolate chips. I'm going to stir those in, basically fold those in nice and gently. I sprayed my muffin pan with some nonstick cooking spray and I'm going to just scoop out 12 muffins. Our muffins are going into a 375 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. So here are the oatmeal cups. I'm going to let them fully cool and then I'm going to just store them in a Ziploc gallon size bag in my refrigerator for the week. They will last about five days in the fridge. They also freeze really well. So I'll go ahead and put all the information here on the screen for you. For my lunch this week, I'm making French onion meatloaf. I'm so excited for this. I'm going to pair this with mashed potatoes, some vegetables. I cannot wait to have this protein packed meatloaf. I love French onion soup, so this is going to be incredible. So let me show you what you'll need. You're going to need salt and pepper, breadcrumbs, Worcestershire sauce, minced garlic, milk of your choice. I'm going to do a pound of 99% ground turkey and a pound of 96% ground beef. If you split it, you won't even know the difference in the meatloaf. And this is actually zero points less calorie than the ground beef, but you're going to get the little bit of fat that's in the ground beef. It's really perfection. It's a great way to save points and calories. You're going to need a lot of onions. So I have four pretty good sized onions, a couple of eggs, cheese of your choice. It called for Gruyere. So I found this Swiss Gruyere blend so I'm going to use that and then you'll need some baking soda. I added the sliced up onions and some minced garlic here to a big skillet. I'm going to let these saute down. 
Our onions are ready for our meatloaf, so we wanted them to get nice and caramelized. So I'm going to go ahead and set these aside and let's put together the meat part of our meatloaf. So I added my onions to a bowl. I'm going to add in half of a cup of milk and half of a cup of breadcrumbs. And then we're going to mix all of that together. We're going to add in two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and some salt and pepper. And I was just reading the directions and apparently we were supposed to add baking soda in with the onions. I did not do that. I don't know what exactly that's going to do or difference that's going to make, but I'll make sure it's included in the original recipe. I have my two pounds of meat in a large bowl. I'm going to add two eggs. We're going to add our onion mixture in next. And then the not so fun part of meatloaf, going in with your hands, we're going to mix everything together until fully, fully combined. And then I sprayed my meatloaf pan with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to pack in the meat. And our meatloaf is going into a 350 degree oven for about 55 to 60 minutes. Just make sure it's cooked through. The French onion meatloaf is out of the oven. I'm actually going to pop the meatloaf out of the pan just so I can leave all the grease behind. I'm going to just set this on a small cutting board and allow it to cool a little bit and then I'll be back to share points, calories, and macros. I just realized I was supposed to top the meatloaf with a cup of cheese and put it back in the oven. So what I'm going to do is just put this in the fridge and when I warm up my slice of meatloaf, I'll top it with some cheese. But this is supposed to go on the meatloaf, back in the oven, under broil. It's been a day. So I went ahead and packaged up the meatloaf. I noticed that some of the areas aren't cooked all the way through. That's not really an issue for me as I'm going to be warming this up for lunch. But if that is an issue for you, maybe keep it in a little bit longer. It's just really hard to tell in a big pan if it's cooked through. But I did decide, to, but I did cut it up into eight slices. So I'll put all the information here on the screen for you. For dessert, sweet treat this week, I'm making blueberry lemon cookies and I'm so excited for these. Now that the weather is warmer, I'm all about lemon. So we'll be doing lots of recipes, including lemon. But let me show you what you'll need for the cookies. You're going to need vanilla extract, fresh or frozen blueberries, light butter, baking soda, a fresh lemon. The recipe calls for lemon extract. I don't have that. I'm just going to add a little bit extra zest and juice to my recipe. All-purpose flour, Lily's white chocolate chips or Chalk Zero. They do have white chocolate chips. I'll be ordering those. This is about the last of my Lily's. I'm using Lakanto granulated as my sweetener. An egg, one third less fat cream cheese, and some salt. Into a large bowl, I'm going to add three quarter cup of light butter at room temperature, and then also four ounces of one third less fat cream cheese at room temperature. And then we're going to cream these two together. And then I'm going to zest in my lemon and squeeze in the juice. And then I'm going to add in one egg and my vanilla extract. And then I'm going to mix this for about a minute. I'm also going to add in my sugar and then give that one more mix. Adding in my salt, half of a teaspoon of baking soda, and three cups of flour. And then we want to mix this by hand, just gently folding those ingredients together. And then we're adding in our cup of fresh blueberries and very gently folding those in. We want to make sure we're not squishing any of the blueberries. And then same thing with our white chocolate chips, gently fold those in. And then we're going to take about a quarter cup of the dough. I added five tablespoons of sugar to a bowl. We're going to take about a quarter cup of the dough, roll, roll it into a ball, and then roll it into the sugar. Place it on our baking sheet and then push it down just a little bit. And our goal is to get 20 cookies total. So I actually ended up getting 24 cookies out of my mix, so that's just going to make them less points and calories. Now you're probably wondering why they're crammed on the baking sheet. These actually have to go into the freezer for one hour before baking, so I'll actually transfer these to two baking sheets once they're frozen. Do not skip this step. The recipe says that they'll look like a pile of mush if you don't freeze them. So I'm popping these into the freezer for an hour. One hour later. 
So I pulled the cookies out of the freezer and I actually have 25 cookies, not 24, but I'm putting these into a 350 degree oven for about 11 to 13 minutes. All right, the cookies are out of the oven. The first batch, the second tray is in the oven. I am going to allow these to cool completely and then we'll package up all the cookies. I'll be back to share points, calories, and macros. So here are the finished cookies. I'm going to just layer them on a plate here and then we'll have them to eat this week. You can store them in the fridge. You can freeze them as well. I'll put all the information here on the screen for you. Thank you for joining me for this week's meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these three recipes as I am. Again, they are on my recipe website. I will link that at the top of the description box along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And don't forget, follow me on Instagram and come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Happy Monday friends. Here's to an amazing, successful week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.